Hi, this is Tom Fiddeman with Ventana Systems. Hope you're all having a good time in Bergen for System Dynamics 2024. Wish I could be there with you. I'd like to share a little bit about what's going on in the Vensim and Vanity universe. At Ventana Systems, we're all about building good models that integrate a variety of information sources and support realism, transparency, robustness, and have enough speed to be extensively calibrated and to support a lot of experimentation. Our attitude is that the best decisions flow from the combination of models and data. The winning attitude is not just all models are wrong, but also all data is wrong. And if you understand the uncertainty around your structure and your data, you can make decisions that are subject to the uncertainty that you face in the real world and track those decisions to improve your methods and your process in the future. We're guided by a couple of visions. One, going all the way back to Jay Forrester's early work, that forecasting in itself is not a particularly useful activity. Instead, what we want is contingent predictions that allow us to anticipate the parts of the real system that are inevitable, but also to control the pieces that we have within our reach and to hedge against the uncertainty in the behavior of competitors or other agents in the rest. Uh, we also think that system dynamics sometimes needs to go beyond simply finding a leverage point and exploiting it. Instead, the model needs to be kept in the loop so that we can continuously learn and improve our decisions. At Ventana, we've done applications in a lot of different domains. We're currently working in project management, pharmaceuticals, uh, supply chains, and climate. Uh, but we have experience in a lot of other areas as well. Um, and we put the uh, insights from working in those domains into our software tools. That's led to a number of industry firsts like causal tracing, reality check, real-time simulation in Synthesim. And we have a lot of fairly unique tools for data calibration and exploiting the insights of that in decision making. Um, and particularly in Vanity, some firsts related to representation of dynamic change of structure in models through introduction of new entities um, and a natural way to map to the kind of ad hoc and relational data that you find frequently in the real world. Vensim's hallmark has long been extreme speed and support for large models. Um, it also has a huge installed base of models, which include many features like rich arrays uh, and exploitation of a variety of wrappers for models through scripting, uh, dynamic link library, and a variety of powerful uh, optimization algorithms and Markov chain Monte Carlo. If you're not up to date with version 10, there's a lot of new material, uh, improvements to the GUI. There are new input output tools for diagrams uh, and new tools for understanding models like sensitivity to all. And uh, all of that is supported by uh, parallel execution on multi-core machines. Uh, which can give you tremendous speed you might need for optimization of large-scale problems. I'll show you a couple of things. One cool new feature is sensitivity to all, which allows you to explore a complex model quickly and in a very practical way. Um, so this is the uh, Sturman, Henderson, Beinhacker, and Newman model uh, from a great paper called Behavioral Analysis of Learning Curve Strategy. It's a competitive dynamics model, has a uh, vast diffusion model in the marketplace, and then some company strategy with uh, supply chain, uh, demand forecasting, capacity planning, pricing, and uh, finally financials. Um, so it's a uh, moderately 
complex model with quite a few parameters. And the interesting question is, how do you make more money in this model? And of course, uh, you should refer to the paper, which is a great read. Uh, but one quick way to test that is to simply uh, look at, okay, uh, we want to modify the stream of discounted profits. What parameters could we change uh, that might improve our outcome? Or uh, what parameters might the competitor change that would impact our outcome? Um, and how are all of those things sensitive to the market? So we can use sensitivity to all, which I'm just going to run here, uh, to explore that. And I'm just going to pick the uh, profit of firm one, but you can actually have several outcomes of interest and run this. And uh, that was actually uh, 100 or so runs varying every parameter in the model plus or minus 10 percent um, and now i have a tornado plot that shows me uh, what's interesting and down at the bottom what's less interesting um, and i can look through there may be some nuisance parameters in here which i could suppress if i wanted but uh, let's just pick one and look at it so uh, uh, let's see, one possibility is uh, the strategic decision about maximum market share that I should seek as firm one. Um, now, if I want to understand that a little better, what I can do is just say, hey, let's simulate uh, both of those runs. Um, and then we have full data for those, not just the tornado chart, and we can look at what the uh, outcomes are. Um, so now you can look at uh, profit here. So here's the uh, present value of profit. I'll just pop up a chart quickly. And you can see my base run in blue and then my plus and minus runs for that parameter. And I could start walking through and doing uh, causal tracing, strip graphs and things like that to see how that changed. Uh, so it's a little interesting actually that it's asymmetric. I end up in the same place. Uh, but there are differences in profit early in the simulation. Um, might be something to explore. Uh, I can also use the graph tools new features to switch to run compare mode so I can see the differences from the baseline run. So it's now normalized out the base run and I can see the uh, plus or actually this is the minus run and the plus run. And I could follow those back and see how did that uh, impact the market. Actually, not much on the total market. So it's really all about the competitive status of firm one and two. Uh, so I want to look into my order backlog and my capacity and my pricing and things like that. And I can uh, continue to explore these through the tool. So that's pretty cool and exploits the uh, tremendous speed of Vensim to get you a lot of results in a very short period of time. While we're looking at multiple charts, uh, I neglected to show you another approach to screening. Not only do we have the tornado chart, but we can also right click and look at thumbnail graphs of essentially uh, every parameter effect in the model on our targets of interest. Uh, so you can see from the screening, not very interesting at the bottom, uh, some interesting changes at the top, including uh, some oscillatory and stochastic behaviors triggered by certain parameters. Um, so this is another quick way to essentially see everything that's going on in the model in a hurry. While I'm uh, in this model, I'll show you a couple other multi-run automation features that are new since version 10 and extremely useful. One is that when I simulate the model by launching the simulation control, I can switch to the run manager, which contains a manifest of multiple simulations. So I can automate a bunch of experiments here. Uh, so I have a base run and then I've 
created another one called aggressive and I'll give that some parameter distinctions. Uh, so I'm going to uh, add a uh, change file. Um, so this is uh, an aggressive aggressive. This means both competitors are aggressive. Um, and I could also uh, add a uh, just a uh, parameter change. So for example, um, I could uh, add the uh, propensity to adopt from word of mouth, normally one. I could make that uh, 1.5 to make the market run a little bit faster. So uh, now I have a uh, run, a base run and an aggressive run with these parameter changes. I can save this and cancel out. And then later when I want to replicate the experiment, I can either run all the enabled configurations uh, or I can particular particular one. So now you can see uh, after doing that, I have my uh, base run and I have my aggressive run as well as the earlier experiments that I did. Uh, so I should probably unload those just for clarity and you can see the uh, differences from those and you can also recover those differences using the uh, runs compare tool to see what parameters changed in those experiments. Um, yet another way to build up this kind of information is uh, through a tool called the action recorder. Uh, I'm going to close the data set control and you'll notice here that this has been keeping kind of a breadcrumb trail of the various simulations that I've done as I was working. Vincent PLE users will be pleasantly surprised to find that some of these new features are in the free academic version. Uh, including sensitivity to all. Another important thing that we've moved in here for learning about models uh, is what we call Synthesim Overrides. Uh, this is uh, Jack Homer's worker burnout model, another classic everybody should be familiar with. Um, and uh, we've always had Synthesim here so that you can turn on a model and experiment with it in real time, change the uh, initial conditions, change the parameters of the decision rules. Um, but uh, now you can also use overrides. So I'm going to right click the uh, energy level stock and override its default behavior, which means kind of take control of the uh, equation and replace it with a test input or a constant. So I could look at what happens if we supply a sine wave here, for example. Um, and I can make the amplitude uh, a little bigger um, and see how that drives the rest of the system. So there are lots of interesting uh, things we can do with this and we can also use it for kind of quick policy experimentation. So I'm going to turn that override off. Let's move to another view and test one of the policies. Uh, in the paper, there's a limit on hours worked per week, which turns out to be effective. So I'm going to override that with a default. And you'll notice uh, on the uh, thumbnail plots that things are in a limit cycle mode. Uh, so I'm going to implement this limit after roughly the first cycle. I'll make it a step change from 80 hours down to, say, 44, and we'll do that. At time 30. Uh, so you can see that hours worked per week completes its first cycle uh, and then stabilizes uh, roughly at the limit. And we can look at uh, what that influences. Uh, here's the effect of hours worked on energy drain. And we can also move around and look at uh, energy itself and you can see that the stock has stabilized. So this is a great way to uh, do quick policy experiments on the model without having to write any equations. 
you can go around and beat on things and observe their robustness or lack thereof and look for excursions out of plausible ranges on the states in the model. Extremely useful for learning about both your own work or models that you've replicated or been given uh, to quickly assess their policy implications and their stability. If you look at what's coming, there's one more big interface upgrade, which is new equation editor. It has uh, dockable components. It has uh, predictive typing um, and some other nice uh, features for subscript editing and things like that. We're also going to be working on the uh, web interface builder pervasive uncertainty and other uh, algorithm upgrades in Markov Chain Monte Carlo, um, and generally trying to make it easier to do uh, Bayesian inference, just easy to set it up and easier to understand your results. Um, but as always, we're really interested to hear what would be at the top of your list as well. Switching gears to Venity. Venity is a complementary modeling tool that we built from the ground up with some specific purposes in mind. It supports collaboration and use of source control. It has uh, more model data separation and modularity, which promotes uh, reuse. And it solves some technical problems around uh, sparse matrix relationships, which are inefficient in array-based languages. And uh, it allows you to create uh, dynamic changes in the structure of the system on the fly. You can use Venity for agent-based modeling, although the real target is actually multi-level systems with kind of uh, large-scale entities that look a lot like classical SD models but with uh, dynamic changes. So for example, a competitive market where firms or classes of customers are entering and exiting, or a project model where you have a set of tasks and a prerequisite matrix, which is sparse by the way, uh, and you want to define the project exclusively from data, or think of the uh, beer game where the supply chain has an arbitrary structure that, again, you would like to define by data. Or even a more static environment like a climate integrated assessment model where you have some physical systems, the carbon cycle, and some economic sectors. And you'd like to delegate those to different teams who work on them simultaneously and share their progress via source control. Those are all use cases for Venity. One of the key pieces of that is flexible aggregation because when you go into a project, you often don't know what the right answer is in terms of what detail should be in or out. Uh, so you'd like to be able to try different methods of working with the structure and the data. Uh, anything between agents and 100% aggregation with lots of in-between options like aging chains and cohorts and uh, sort of matrices of uh, features. Um, Venity supports all of that and you can even build these things in the same model and run them side by side. That way in situations where you can't know a priori what's going to work best, you can use Venity to work out how to do the aggregation right and kind of empirically determine what's actually going to work. Um, this also lets you meet decision makers where they live, which is in tactical detail, and uh, show them the granularity that they are trying to manage day to day. So what's new in Venity? Uh, well, there are a few things you will see, like new model maps and the diagram list view. And a key thing you won't, which is that we've shifted away from the subscription model to a perpetual licensing model, uh, which enables you to uh, run your copy forever like Vensim and uh, only uh, ante up for maintenance when you 
need a new version. Let's take a look at Vanity. Uh, this is a project model that I built a couple of years ago. Uh, it has Synthesim-like capability with sliders, and those are data-driven, so they uh, vary if you change the initialization data for the model. Um, I have uh, interactivity on the plots, so I can brush to see what's what and read values, and some navigation, so I can uh, visit an entity type and see what makes it tick. And I have a lot of the usual tools that I've come to expect from Vensim. Uh, so for example, uh, nice uh, causal tracing uh, that's actually very interactive. I can double click nodes and I can right click them to uh, navigate to the node and find its diagram instance, uh, which is actually right here, and so forth. Um, so uh, this is a modestly big model. So if I want to know what's going on in it, one thing I can do is build some navigation using the buttons. Uh, but the new diagrams list also lets me simply browse what are all the uh, diagrams in the model. And I can go visit those and I can navigate uh, forward and back. Uh, so that I can understand what's going on in the pieces of it. Uh, but maybe the most interesting part of that is the new model map. I'm going to switch back to the overview. Uh, and actually, you'll notice uh, in Vanity that all of these uh, windows are floatable and dockable, so it's a very interactive development environment. Um, so I'm going to go to the model maps and create a new model map which gives me an automated layout of the structure of this model. And you can see the uh, circles are entities, the green ones are collections of entities, and the orange triangles are uh, actions that create and destroy things or dynamically change structure on the fly. Um, so let me close an inspector here to get a little more space. And we'll zoom out a little bit. So the uh, default here is not as pretty as it could be, but I'm going to uh, rearrange a few of the elements. And I can uh, quickly improve the layout here and keep that saved with the model. And then I can also right click here in the background to filter the, what I'm seeing. And there are several filter modes. Uh, so one is that I can simply uh, turn off all these disconnected nodes, collections of things that don't do anything and so forth. Um, that will uh, kind of visually simplify things. Another thing I could do is uh, go to a list of specific items and I could uh, individually select or deselect particular nodes in order to improve um, the, uh, you know, in order to focus on a particular topic, for example. And then finally, uh, another way of focusing topically is that I could choose all of the connections to a single entity type. Uh, so, for example, if I want to focus here on the task, uh, I can choose that and restrict the selections to just the task related items so I can see how that entity interacts with kind of its context in the model. Um, so these are neat ways of understanding what's going on in the model and uh, making it accessible to users. And of course, uh, you can also use this um, to create kind of top level uh, navigation. I can uh, go to view the main diagram of the task, for example, and see the rework cycle. A couple other things that are fairly new. Uh, Venity has some simple 3D visualization capabilities. This is a model of agents essentially swarming a sugar pile. And you can see sort of the payoff landscape as it evolves. My personal favorite is the ability to do geographical data in Vanity. 
Um, this is a uh, GIS map of counties in Wisconsin, and we're looking at uh, data in this case for prevalence of chronic wasting disease in deer, and you can animate it over time. We could also couple this to the dynamics of the model, uh, but in this case, actually, we used Vendity to build what we call a data model, which is basically a pre-processing tool for integrating a bunch of data from diverse sources and getting everything aligned on the same spatial grid, uh, as well as the same uh, level of aggregation in other ways, and sometimes combining series from different sources to produce the kind of uh, end use data that we want to have in the dynamic model. Um, so uh, we in the same structure, uh, we have uh, township level data on the same uh, disease features, for example. You can see the disease uh, growing more granularly here. Uh, and then we have a lot of time series, uh, deer populations and harvests and things like that. And the Venity architecture makes it really easy to uh, classify things and explore subsets of the data. So, for example, here I'm just looking at the limited subset of counties with uh, sort of uh, high prevalence endemic disease. Um, so this was extremely useful in creating the infrastructure for the project, which also involves a dynamic model. In the case of the counties, actually, we initially extracted the list of county names from the shapefile uh, for the state uh, from the attribute table. And then we linked it up to a lot of spreadsheet data sources. So if you browse the model, uh, what you'll find is that there are a whole bunch of spreadsheets uh, with various features like deer population estimates, uh, which are linked in, and then everything is connected by the county ID name. So you can see time series here for deer population estimates. Um, and this data is all brought in and uh, displayed well on this central graph and also uh, used alongside of other data to work out harvest rates and things like that. Um, so uh, the kind of ability to have an ad hoc uh, mapping of various entities in the data was key here. Uh, another thing that we did, for example, um, was uh, we have the county level description for some of the data and then for a few series we also have the uh, township level townships are a regular grid and counties are irregular uh, but we use quantum gis to identify the county associated with each township and then we could aggregate the data from the detailed township grid level into the more aggregate counties. Now, you could do some of those same operations in Vensim uh, or another array-based system dynamics language, but it would be painful because arrays are not good at having an irregular mapping from with it where the number of townships in a county uh, varies by county. Um, you could also do it in a database or, uh, or maybe in you know, Python using Pandas data frames or in R. Um, but again, it may be a pain to uh, get the time series dynamics working. And in particular, you don't have all the dynamic modeling tools that you need in order to have a decent, robust, well-tested model for each grid cell. Again, with Vanity, there's always lots to do on our to-do list, uh, but we're really most interested in what you'd like to see. So let us know here or in our forum or by email or uh, catch us at the uh, conference uh, exhibit hall table, and we'd love to talk to you about it. Thanks, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you online and at next year's conference.